it's just jet fuel, it's just jet fuel. Okay, well, look up geoengineering, look up a heart project, you know, kind of look into what, what I'm talking about and just, just take it with a grain of salt, you know, don't take yeah. what I'm saying, build your own conclusions out of what the research that you do on it. Just do some research and see what's going on. Yeah, just be open-minded about what's going on. Exactly, just, yeah. And check it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, like you were talking about the protests and, and the, you know, the, the cop killings and, you know, with the, with the one in Ferguson, I have to admit, I'm on the side of the police on that one, you know, the, from the video that I saw of him, you know, with the strong arm robbery and, exactly. and whatnot, it certainly looked to me like he was pretty, he, I could see him based on that behavior being combative, yeah. you know, it, it, and so it seems to me that it probably was justified, but the one in New York, you know, the video on that, I mean, he, the guy, you know, yeah, he, he obviously didn't want to go to jail and he backed up, but he never attempted to strike anyone. He had his hands like this the all. whole time. They right. jumped all over him and he got choked, you know, like it, it certainly looks extreme. It does. You know, you know, what I would like to see is the evidence the grand jury saw, you know, because obviously I only saw, you know, five second clip on the news of it, you right. know, and they're going to show the most inflammatory part. Exactly. You know, but based on that, it does look like the cops went overboard. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, like you were saying, that's where we need to look at the whole picture. Make sure you take it all in before you make up your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to go back to the Michael Brown story also, I mean, there, there was, a, from what's been told to us as the real story, um, it, it doesn't sound good for him. It sounds like he was in the wrong, and, yeah. uh, you know, he, he shouldn't have been doing what he's doing. Yeah. But, I mean, does that justify he needs to be pumped with eight, nine, ten bullets? Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it, and then they leave his body in the street for three, yeah. four hours. And yeah. You know, obviously, I, you're going to incite the neighborhood in a, in a community yeah. of where it was, where yeah. it went down and everything. Especially when they don't already trust the police. Exactly. Yeah. And in a, in a town that's got 80% black population and uh, about a 95% white police force, yeah. might stir up some issues so you know what makes me mad is that they have all the tools to bring the propaganda out on how the story or basically control the narrative and how the story is told exactly and people individuals like us how are we going to fight back mm -hmm. unless we stand up for one another right i almost you know i know there's some good cops but my natural instinct is to stand up for the individual that's being bullied Exactly. Even if they're wrong, I'd be like, okay, now listen, you need to calm down a little bit so you don't get shot or something. <laughs> exactly. But I would almost stand up for them than I would for the police just mm -hmm. because they have a bigger pulpit, excuse me, to speak from. They are just more aggressive. Yeah. And like you said, they're becoming more militarized, which scares the heck out of a lot of people. Oh, yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. So do you see that the younger people right now are becoming more familiar with this? Um, what's, your, what's your stance? Or to me, see? from what I can see, it goes one of two ways. It's either you you want to know more about what's going on or, and you want more information or you want to see different angles to different sides of stories. And, you know, that's what I try and provide. I just try and provide the alternative story to, hey, what if this was what happened? You know, check into this. We should do some studying into this instead of just thinking what's going on with how the media right. told us the story is or whatnot. Right. So how'd you get so many viewers or followers? Um, you know, on uh, Instagram, a lot of it is uh, you can follow by hashtags. And that's kind of the new, bigger trending thing of what's going on in today's culture. So um, a lot of my posts, I would just hashtag it with, you know, chemtrails or GMO or label GMO or um, Monsanto, you know, just, just, and you can kind of, if, say, uh, a company's trying to promote a cause or something, and they're a negative company, and they're putting their corporate dollars into these overseas wars or whatnot, and you want to hop on there, hop onto their hashtag, you create a kind of controversial image, and you hashtag it with that. So if the uh, followers on Instagram or just anyone who's on Instagram, if they go to search a certain term or a certain image, if you have that hashtag in there and that's what they're searching for, that's the image they're going to find, and it's mm -hmm. going to pop up that way. So... Um, I think it was a lot to do with that, you know, just right. kind of putting out a whole bunch of hashtags on uh, pictures and whatnot and kind of getting people that are a little bit like-minded or just at least open-minded to uh, see a different side of a story. Now, now, how do they get a hold of you on Instagram? Um, I mean, a lot of people will just comment in a picture <laughs> if, uh, if they're, you know, if they're controversial to it or whatever, um, they comment on a picture. But sometimes uh, there's ways that you can 
uh, send pictures directly to users of the website, so it's kind of like Facebook messaging a little bit, um, to where you just have an inbox and you can view messages sent to you, and then it basically just creates a thread. There's an image, and people can comment on that below, but it's a private thread between whoever it's sent to. Do you ever get any like like real bad hate mail, like threats or anything? Um, not really too much. I've had a couple couple uh, <coughs> mysterious comments come on some of my images, but nothing nothing really that I took serious. So. Yeah. You know. But yeah, there's always there's always those people out there. I, I see them. There's a there's a lot of different profiles that I'll I'll follow on there too. Kind of with yeah. the same little bit of a message. Um, just be open minded and look into your stuff. And so uh, yeah, we see or I see. Uh, I see some images and whatnot from those kind of profiles, and I see some of the people commenting on there, and they'll have, you know, 100,000 followers or whatever on their pages, um, and there's all kinds of different angles, you know. Yeah. There'll be a thousand comments on the whole thread or the whole image itself, and yeah. it's all the different yeah. viewpoints. You know, I mean, going back to the to the protests in New York, that is another thing that really angered me about it you know what even if the guy was lashing out at the cops which it didn't appear that he was mm -hmm. if you look at what he was being charged with he was like selling e-cigarettes yeah. illegally mm -hmm. so basically oh it's gosh. yeah it, it's selling cigarettes without the government getting their cut getting the tax you know yeah. i mean over that you know they, the they government not getting their tax dollars they just want their hand in the cookie jar yeah if someone's making money they want a part of it yeah so so do you feel like uh do you have older folks following you or is it just um, mostly i mean younger? it's all it's Ages from younger and like mid teens, some younger mm -hmm. kids, even like eight, nine, ten years old, and then there's wow. kids all the way, or there's there's older folks up to I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years old. I mean, I've seen it's pretty funny to see their page will only have one or two images, they don't know how to use it too well, but you know, they're seeing my message still, still comes across their feed. They'll see my image and they'll see kind of my yeah. point of view, so. Yeah. So um, I also heard that you have people from Israel following you. Um, I, I couldn't say for sure. I mean, there's, there's a couple of people. Uh, I, when the Palestine whole situation was going on with uh, Israel invading and putting ground troops in there and going in, um, I got a lot. I put up some different controversial images around that time, and I would get people from Palestine saying, you know, oh, you're not seeing both sides of the picture, or people that agree with me on it. And uh, it, it's, it, there's people from all over the world on that website, really. So right. it's a so, good, good way to get a message out. So sometimes when these people are commenting back, do, you, do they kind of help Re, you know, rethink some of the things that you're thinking, or um, you're pretty bit, much yeah. solid on what you're. No, are. yeah, I'm. I'm definitely. I'm an open-minded person. I'm. I'm willing to read these comments and listen to different people's viewpoints. And sometimes, you know, they bring up great topics and they bring up great angles that, you know, I might not thought about in this whole situation. Maybe my opinion was based off of one story that I thought was to be the truth, right. but, you know, their angle adds a different perspective to it. And hey, maybe I should look into that. That's hmm. good. I think we've got. Oh, go sorry. ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask how old you were, if you don't mind me asking. Oh, I'm 22 years old. Okay. I, I mean, that's pretty uh, advanced, uh, you know, reasoning, I guess. You yeah. know, being as open-minded. I know when I was 22, you know, I thought that I all, I had it all figured out, and yeah. you know, the world kicks your ass a few times, and you realize you don't know everything you thought you did. So yeah. I'm glad you can be open-minded at yeah, such a young definitely. age. Well, yeah, that was, that was kind of the thing too. When I was younger, um, I was just kind of the mainstream kind of kid you know I, I played sports I played football and baseball and uh, I out of high school I, I did good in high school I didn't have problems I had a mid like 3.5 cumulative GPA I was a pretty smart kid in classes um, I, uh, I paid attention to what was going on I just didn't see the bigger picture of it and you know I kind of I graduated high school I went a little bit with the system you know went to uh, go start doing college taking classes and I realized, I, I don't know what I want to do. Why am I going to this college if I don't want to do anything with the degree I'm going to get from it? Right. And half the time, even if I just got a useless business degree, um, you're still going to have to start over in a company anyway. You've got to work from the bottom, and it depends on the kind of hard work you're going to put in to get somewhere. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, my parents really instilled, instilled some good teachings in me growing up. Um, I feel like they taught me the value of a dollar and um, they taught me how to respect people around me and how to, uh, you know, how to work hard and get ahead in life. So, it's awesome. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, I think we got a question from our audience. 
It's Mitch, one of our callers that stirred up some problems here a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> good kind of problems. But good problems, yeah. Yes, so Mitch, welcome to the show. How's it going, Mitch? Good. I just wanted to say, Travis, uh, that it's great for you to start the conversation. I think that's something that's really important for us to do with everybody in our lives right now with Absolutely. all the stuff that's going on. Yeah. Uh, what I'm not hearing a lot of on TV, uh, besides the black and white issue, I think with the immigration, we've also brought in the Hispanic issue. I'm hearing a lot of anger against Hispanics mm -hmm. uh, in with all this, and I think that's going to be part of what they're planning with this race war. This is all very timely. Right. And it all seems, a little, I'm just not hearing a lot of people talking about that. And uh, I'm hearing other people's frustration with not only with what's going on, but when you're going to the store okay. and you see a Hispanic family that, it, that these are not bad people. Mm -hmm. I've known lots of illegals, worked with lots of illegals in construction, some of the best people I've known. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, yeah. But when you see uh, them in there, they can't speak English, they're dressed to the nines, and they got shopping carts full of thousands of dollars worth of stuff, and they're on a shopping spree because yeah. they just got their check. It's, it, it's getting pretty prevalent right now. And yeah, I actually witnessed it myself and Fred Myers the other day oh, yeah. when I was in there with my girls. And uh, yeah. I don't know, I'm just, uh, I thought maybe that was something to shoot at you because I think that the conversation is the important part right now and yeah. what you're doing is very important. Absolutely, so. yeah. You know, when, uh, when, they, when actually mainstream actually started touching the immigration subject, which was surprising to me in the first place, but I think they got so much pressure from just outside people saying, you know, what's going on? And I think uh, even the Alex Jones show had a lot to do with that. They shed a pretty big light on it and uh, mm. how big the borders open down there. And... Uh, it, you know, it's not really something that we need to take out on the illegals. You know, it's not their fault. If you look at the countries that they're coming from, I mean, would you blame them if you were in that same situation? No, I mean, it, they're in a bad situation down there in Mexico. Exactly. So wouldn't, wouldn't you want to come to a good place? But at the same time, you, you have to blame the main subject of it, who happens to be our president. And um, he is just blatantly disregarding the entire issue that what this is going to do to the country, you know. We, we already have millions of people in this country that are unemployed and looking for jobs. There's a lot of them, granted, that aren't looking for jobs, and those illegals would gladly come in and take those jobs and work hard at them and get the right. job done. But as they come in, uh, they can flood the market with a, a lower working wage, which drives down the middle class in America. And once you start driving down the middle class, you start to get that bigger gap between the rich, the rich and, poor, and the poor, and it yeah. starts to really define itself. And um, it, it's crazy how how blatantly obvious a lot of the media is with how they really want to run this world. Um, I just saw The Hunger Games this just oh, last week that. on that Tuesday. Was, yeah. And um, amazing. I mean, the subliminal imagery is there. The whole yep. police state mentality, uh, you do what you're told by the state, you do the job you're told. It, it's a it's a communist manifesto basically I mean it, it's how they want a communist society in America and uh, I, I think with them rubbing it in our face it, some people should see it and I, I feel like if you're awake to really how corrupt our government is if you see the lies that the president tells on a daily basis at least you, you might start asking questions about things like that and you know how far away is the revolution and how how far around the corner is it going to take for someone to wake up? You know, they say the Civil War was fought with 3% of the country. Yeah, something like very small. 3, 5%. Yep. Uh, that's, that's all it takes, really. Yeah. I mean, it, the people that are in charge, the top 1%, it's not a lot. You know, the people have to realize that they're the ones that make this whole economy go. They're the ones that, you know, put their nose to the grind and make these companies the money. Right. So it... Uh, <clears throat> it's a it's a pretty corrupt system. You're making some really strong statements here. So yeah. as in being 22, mm -hmm. do you get any backlash from that? Um, from you know, I I get the people same age as you. I get I I get backlash for sure. Yeah, a lot of people. Why do you even care? You know, you enjoy yourself. Just have fun. <laughs> Yolo. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's not what it's about. You know, you want to have a future for yourself, and you want to have a future for your kids. You don't want to you don't want to leave a society worse than you came into it. 
and yeah. that's that's definitely where we're going. Yeah, so. even even basic animals and all that crap. You know, you don't you don't crap where you eat. Exactly. You know, you don't yep. ruin. And I wanted to go back to the immigration thing. Uh, I, I I used to work with this guy. He was kind of off the wall, mm -hmm. and he came up to me telling me about this T-shirt he ordered off the internet, and it was a big fist with the middle finger, and it said, you know, F you. I mean, it had the real world word, but it said F you immigrants. And, and he told me about this and just started laughing and slapping his knee and ah, ha, ha, ha. And I said, yeah, you know, my dad's an immigrant. And he just kind of, uh, um, really? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, he's from Costa Rica. I used to live there. And uh, what I don't like is how the media tries to portray this as a race war, that it's whites versus Hispanics or Americans versus, right. well, we just don't like Hispanic people. And it's like, that's that's. I'm going to say it, that's bullshit. Yep. My dad is from Costa Rica. He's a legal immigrant. He's been here since 1971. And my dad doesn't like the illegal immigrants because they give people like him a bad name, mm -hmm, that right. they come over here without permission. And, and to me, I, 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 I liken it to waiting in line. Like, who would tolerate that? You know, people like my dad got in line, waited their turn, and came in. And someone else cuts in line. Imagine waiting in line for concert tickets or, or the movies, and someone cuts in front of you, and you bring it to the manager's attention. Hey, the, you know, this guy in front of me, he cut in line. Mm -hmm. Imagine your response if they told you, well, sir, he's already in line, so just let him stay there, and you'll just have to wait longer. No one would tolerate that. No one. Right. And it is completely unfair to people like my dad, and they try to portray it as a racist issue. It's like, well, it's my dad's excuse. He, do, he hates Hispanics. He is Hispanic. <laughs> right. You know? Exactly. And, and when, I, when I went down to Costa Rica and the last time in 2009 I was talking with my cousin and uh, and they had the exact same problems with people coming over from Nicaragua into mm -hmm. Costa Rica and all oh, these Nicaraguans they come over here and they 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 work for half of what everyone else will work for and it disrupts the local economy so so what's their excuse they just don't like Hispanics you know it, it is not a, a racist issue it is mm -hmm. a cultural issue you know and I mean it does you know I, I agree with everything you said they're coming over for the right reasons. If I had kids and they were starving and I knew if I could go to Canada and make three times what I make here, I'd probably do it. Absolutely. But it's unsustainable. Oh. I mean, our country is $18 trillion in debt and we can't afford it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's sad to have to be that hard hearted, mm -hmm. but it well, has to what's, be done. What's sad about that, Adrian, is they're telling the, the Hispanics that we don't want them, we hate them and stuff like that. So when they're coming in here, it almost looks like they already have this idea that we don't like them and we hate them. Yeah. It's not that I hate these people. Mm -hmm. I hate what their government is doing. Yeah. It's dishonest to them yeah. and it's dishonest to us. Yeah. Why don't, you know, I know some Hispanics that actually came over and they said, we went through the right proper procedures mm -hmm. and how to become citizens. Why can't everybody else? Yeah. And they should. And, and like you said, it's like... If We're not you look, keeping them out. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the natural resources of Mexico, I mean, with the reserves of gold and silver and oil, they, they, yeah. they could be completely prosperous. They but could, the, but yeah. the government screwed up. Yep. It's yep. corrupt. And, yeah. uh, Very corrupt. And I don't, know, I don't know. I don't think anyone has any good ideas for how to fix it. It needs to be fixed, but who knows how to do it. Yeah, but exactly. that's a discussion we should be having, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was down there for three months, uh, just kind of going to Guatemala and Mexico. And, and this one family I was staying with, Every time they had their whole house gated up, bars on their windows, and when we would leave, the servants would go down and they walk down one side of the street, down the other corner of the street, and they, I was like, what's going on here? Why do they have to kind of like spread out and check the whole streets? And we would come out and we would not stop, we would just take off. And uh, I found out it was like six months later, he got kidnapped. Hmm. As he came out of his house, he got kidnapped and was ransomed. Yeah, and he said it, it goes on like that all the time down there, mm -hmm. just kidnappings. I mean, who wants to live in that kind of place? Yeah. You know, I don't blame them for wanting to come here, yeah. but we need to have, it needs to be, in, the procedures need to be in place so it protects everybody. Mm -hmm. So when you go through the right procedures, you actually have freedom and actually have a potential to make a good living yeah. instead of being treated with a, what do you call it, um, What's the minimum wage salary? Oh, yeah. It's, you know, at minimum wage now, I mean, you can barely get by with minimum wage. Well, plus you qualify for all the benefits they're going to yeah. give you. Oh, yeah. And it's, I think that's a huge incentive to it, too. You know, um, our Democratic Party says that they're not trying to uh, encourage illegal immigration, but they're 
not showing any action to stop it. And uh, I think that's a big part of it. Um, they're, I, I feel like they're trying to really narrow the market for um, the American voter as well. Because oh, um, you see the percentages in this last election, especially uh, percentages of people voting that are registered even to vote is dropping significantly. And um, these other immigrants that are coming in, you know, uh, a lot of stories, at least through Alex Jones's website, they were showing how they would they would bring them into the country and Department of Homeland Security would pay for them to get a Greyhound ticket yep. to go wherever they wanted in the country if they had family or if they just claimed they had family in a certain state hmm. or wherever. They would buy them a ticket. They would ship them to whatever state they wanted to go to. Man, so, when he was reporting on that, they shut his uh, his, site his, his site down. Yeah, they, Seventy was it over 70,000 uh, soldiers couldn't get his website up. Yeah. Uh, they the just basis, shut it they down. just blocked it through yeah. all government computers. Yep. So yeah, he had he had a bunch of people calling in on that too and saying, "Hey, you know, I was a witness to this. This happened to me." Oh yeah, it happened to me too. I couldn't get on there. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So it's uh it's crazy. And when you hit those hot topic issues, you know, when something like that happens, you know, I've had my Instagram. If I was posting something on there, um, some some days I'll post one thing on there. Some days I'll post twenty five things on there, and you just throw out a bunch of subjects and start going but uh there will be times when i'm posting and i'm three four posts in and i'm going to post the fifth or sixth one and all of a sudden i click on the picture i'm going to load and then my whole site just freezes and i'm on my phone just freezes out all of a sudden closes me out of the application reopens the application everything on my past search history is all gone and so it's uh it, you know i'd like to think it's just a glitch but I think I know a little better than that to, yeah. uh, to, to say just that. <laughs> I think I know what's what's going on, a little bit of monitoring, and you, you can't say they're not watching your phones. You can't say oh, they're yeah. not listening to what you're saying. Uh, so. I, I just wanted to throw out the phone number real quick. If uh, anyone wants to call in with any questions for Travis or any of us, uh, the number is 360-693-7544. Yeah. This is, looks like Mitch has got another question. Oh, cool. No, it's fine. I actually worked with uh, an immigrant uh, for a couple of years. We became pretty good friends. Uh, he was an illegal. And I asked him, I said, how do you get around this? We were paying taxes. You know, we were, we're on above the board job here. How are, you, how are you getting around this? And he was telling me how that they can use each other's UBI numbers. And they, he had a friend that was legal. And he was renting out his UBI number to a, a couple hundred other people that were going in on the same Social Security number into mm -hmm. Social Security. They said that they don't, the government doesn't care about it as long as you don't claim your taxes back at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And everybody just paid this guy a little bit of money to use his UBI number. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but that, they don't, they're not talking about any of this, of course. And right. it's not, it, not a lot of people know that. But right. there, there's many more undocumented workers that are working here legally using other people's information and that's uh, Alex has touched on that on his show about how they'll give out your information how your information isn't safe anymore and you know you may be working in five different states right now and not even know it right. so it, it's kind of interesting but uh, well and it's interesting to look at that too with all the previous hacks going on with you know Target Home Depot absolutely. left and right you see the next one coming and so it's uh it's hard to really and trust in the system, even internet yeah. or anything at all, to put a credit card number out, to put your address out anywhere. I mean, it's uh, it, it it sucks, and I think that's a lot of why they're trying to push this net neutrality among us and uh, biometrics. Biometrics and all that stuff. That's and it's, that's it's, a it's, good way to sell it. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, and it's a it's a good gateway to the uh, the RFID chips too. You know, that's it, part of biometrics. Your RFID yeah. chips can't be hacked. You can keep all your money, and you can keep everything else on on this and. Uh, I think that's going to be, you're going to probably start seeing a lot more of these hack attacks on different companies and stuff like that. And they're going to start saying, oh, you're not secure anymore. You need the latest technology. Get your, get your chip. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting when you think about that in a sense because you think you have the chip. You know, you could probably be tracked through the chip or whatever else. But you look at today's society and everybody's already armed themselves with an RFID chip. You know, your phone, your phone tells you every action you do. It tells you where you're going. If you have an iPhone and you have any kind of location or anything on there active, it can determine your schedule. I mean, uh, my fiance, I've had personal experiences with this. She, um, 
she'll go, she works different schedules and she works pretty, pretty constant on the weekdays and um, she opened her information, she just pulled down her information slide and it said it'll take you 10 minutes to get to where she was working at next. And she goes, wait, how does it know that hmm. that's where I'm going today? Like, it's obviously recording your patterns. It's uh, absolutely telling exactly where you're going. I, I actually experienced what you experienced with your Instagram account on mm -hmm. Facebook. Yeah. I posted some stuff about Eric Pianca and uh, the Ebola and how awesome it'll be when it kills 95% of the population. Yeah. And uh, Facebook got really mad. Yeah. It started, trying to, yeah. it started trying to shut down on me. They started asking me a bunch of questions. You need to re-update your profile, all this. Mm -hmm. And I just kept typing F you. So kept going they didn't like it. it. Nice. But, yeah. So what's your Instagram uh, site? Uh, name the name on it is just Agenda 21 Wake Up. Um, I think it kind of emboldens everything I try to go about in the title, um, Agenda 21 at least. I think that's kind of the full spectrum dominance of what the country is a little bit experienced right now. They're getting hit on all fronts, you know. There's, we're getting more and more genetically modified foods pushed at us. You know, we're getting these dirty vaccines with different chemicals and different heavy metals in it. And we see our autism rates skyrocketing. We see our cancer rates skyrocketing. We see tenfold increases in the last 10 years right. and all kinds of different diseases. And, um, you know, I think, I think that a lot of people just aren't really conscious of what they're putting in their bodies through food at least. And um, there's, there's just people that don't see the bigger picture of things. And I feel like my, my Instagram is a good way for me to express it. You know, I'm not the smartest person out there. It, it's just my opinion. It's my profile. You can go somewhere else and get a different opinion and get a different viewpoint. But what I'm trying to encourage is just kind of doing your research. Well, you sound very well educated on what's going on. Thank you. So, um, if anybody has any questions for Travis, please call us at 360-693-7544. And I think Travis is going to have to be leaving here shortly. And um, so this is the time to call in and ask him a question if you have a question. And, uh, man, I really appreciate you coming on here. Yeah, absolutely. And I really appreciate you just stepping out yeah. and making that bold statement, just mm -hmm. trying to, you know, I was telling on the last show, it seems like they're always trying to squelch our speech. Mm -hmm. Every time we try to say something, oh, you're stupid. You're, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, they go to slander, and they try to slander the character mm -hmm. instead of trying to have an educated debate right. about the subject. Yeah. They want to slander you. Yep. And I really commend you for stepping out. Yeah, you know, and I, I think this is a great platform, too, this this TV station, at least. You know, there's not a lot of people who who really don't have an agenda when they start the TV show. You know, you just kind of go at it, and nothing's off topic here, and you can just kind of talk right. about whatever's going on. And yeah. that's how you get to the truth. You know, you have conversations with people. You start these conversations in your community. You talk to your neighbors. You know, you inform them. Just, just start with something you can really get, you know, determined with and something you're passionate about. You know, if you don't like GMO foods or you want them labeled, start a campaign, make a petition, talk to your neighbors, send out flyers. Um, you know, if you're, if you're motivated about telling people to stop taking vaccines, do it. Start right. talking to people. Walk up to someone in the grocery store. Say, hey, did you know... Did you know that there's this in your vaccine if, you, if you're going to take it or go to a flu shot line, you know, and inform, inform the people, hey, you know, if you get that flu shot, you're probably 50 percent more likely to get the flu than if you don't get it. Right. Because, you know, a, right. a human immune system, it, it's dealt to deal with viruses and it's dealt to deal with it on its own. But when you inject the virus directly into you with these flu shots and with whatever else heavy metals are on it, you know, just read the insert. I'll tell you everything that's on there. Right. Um, you're doing the harm to yourself, and uh, you know ignorance is bliss, but it'll still kill you. Yeah. How hard is it for an individual just to start making those steps um, to get the information out? It's as dedicated as you really are to the topic. You know, if you care about something, you got to be the one to show it. You can't expect someone else to do it for you. Um, and like I said, that's that's kind of how I was raised. You know, you can't. You can't expect anything's going to be handed to you or given to you. You have to go out and make it happen. So if you have an idea, if you have a dream, if you have 
something you're passionate about, go out and show it. Yeah. It might start out slow, but if you just reach one person, mm -hmm. man, it just starts snowballing. And it just gets bigger. You were stuck at like 3,500 uh, followers for a while, right? And all of a sudden it just kicked up to 5,000? Yeah, you know, I, I was posting a lot of controversial stuff and I'll get followers coming in and I'll get followers going out, you know? People that want to see what's going on and then they don't like something, so they leave. That's, that's their issue, you know? I'm, right. I'm doing what I'm doing and I know what I believe. So. Yeah, you can't hold on to everybody. No, I mean, yeah, and it's it's unrealistic. You know, it's right. it's a person falling. You know, I I will value your opinion. I'll I'll see what you're talking about. But right, if you don't agree with me, you don't agree. If you want to have a debate, we can have a debate. Right. So, yeah, and it doesn't have to be a heated debate. It's we're no, just yeah. we're all trying to learn here. We're trying to back one another up. Yeah. I don't know everything. We, you know, we've all come to that agreement, yeah. and we're but we're always trying to seek for more of the truth. And sometimes when I think I do know the truth, I always have to recant and then kind of change my viewpoint because I find out there's more information out there. Yeah, exactly. So we're always evolving. Not everybody has the 110% the answer for the solution to the problem. But Travis, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> do you have it's any closing fun. comments? Um, not too many. You know, just go check out my page, see what's. See what's been going on. If you're if you're awake, I appreciate your viewpoint. You know, comment on my stuff. Let me know if you like it. Um, let me know what you want more of. Or yeah, put in your opinion. You know, can you give that out one more time? Yeah, it's a uh, Agenda Twenty One Wake Up. It's all one word on Instagram. Cool. And it looks like we got another question over yeah, there. Yeah, go ahead, Mitch. I I don't think you should feel stupid with anything that you're doing right now. I, if you've been watching Congress at all, we've watched the Department of Homeland Security sit there and make, and scoff at the congressman and make them look stupid or try. Yeah. And it really only makes him look stupid. If you're starting the conversation, whether you don't have all your facts right or what, whatever, if you're getting somebody to some information that they can use, you're doing something incredibly important in my exactly. view. So don't let anybody make you feel stupid. I argue with people all the time. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Exactly. You're, you're actually helping them, and maybe it'll take them a month to figure it out and actually get in there and look at something. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a piece of the puzzle. Not everybody's got everything because there's too much stuff going on. Yeah, so. you really just have to light that spark, too. There you and go. And once, once uh, it gets going, there's no telling where it goes. That's why I think what you're doing is so important. Awesome. Hi, uh, Travis. It's been uh, interesting having you here tonight. I know uh, probably a lot of people at home don't really know what Agenda 21 is, mm -hmm. um, it's a, which is actually a UN program. Yes, I was actually wondering if you have any insight as to what's been going on locally with Agenda 21. Um, locally, uh, I can't see too much going on, at least with police forces, but mm -hmm. I've seen locally, um, through our train systems at least, I've seen a lot of militarized different uh, MRAP vehicles, tanks, um, heavy armory mm -hmm. coming through our area. Um, not sure exactly where it's going. Um, I mean, it'd be something for, for some people to look into if yeah. you're really interested in it. Um, you know, so far locally, our, our police department, I don't think has been bad at all. Clark County Police, um, they, they do their job. I've been pulled over by a cop, you know, as long as you cooperate with the cop, mm -hmm. it, if you do what he tells you, you're not going to get in trouble, and he's not going to look look at you as a criminal. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's a big part of some of these hot topic issues too. Is these these kids are going out and doing stupid stuff, mm -hmm. and then you raise an issue out of a kid being in the wrong, and it's not it's not a good issue to back, mm -hmm. but there there's a bigger issue there that shows the militariz militarization of the police, and it, it's something that does need to be talked about. And, something that needs to be debated and yep. probably something that needs to be limited too. Okay. It's the kind of thing we can do here on FPTV. Yeah, so. exactly. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, you know, there's been s some debates that the Vancouver police at a certain point is out of control in certain aspects, but the sheriff's department, man, I got to give them some, uh, some kudos to what they're doing because just talking with them, those guys are awake. Yeah. a good portion of them mm -hmm. um, but I think they kind of keep it balanced with the local police because right. I, I know a couple incidences from certain friends they've had some run-ins with the police mm -hmm. around here and I think they're just very uh, some of them are just untrained yeah absolutely they, they get these guys going to the police academy for 
month or two, shoot them out on the streets and yeah, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the scariest part. And, uh, you know, I think, I think police officers have a tough job. I mean, they don't know when the next criminal they're going to run into is. And That's true. I, I can commend a police officer all day long for his job because it, it is it is a tough, stressful situation. You know, you don't know if you're going to even come home tonight. Well, my my thinking is that you know they if they keep going the way they're going, they're not going to have the public support. Mm -hmm. So that it makes things even worse. Right. You know, now you're almost like a public enemy instead of a public servant. Exactly. I remember when I was younger, man, it's like, you know, we were good friends with the police. You know, we never had any problems with mm -hmm. them unless we were doing something. And, but that was very rare. But they were always there basically serving our community. Exactly. But, um, but as, we, the, as times go on, I'm starting to see that they're, because of the lack of training, it makes the public insecure. Mm -hmm. And that causes some rift. Well, and I think that, I think to an extent, the police officers see that too. And some of them are just blatantly abusing the power. Yeah, just, exactly. It's just blatantly obvious. And uh, some of them are out there also, and they're just doing their job. You know, they're trying to keep, keep the community safe. And, and we, can't, we can't put all police under the same umbrella because it, it's not the same. Right. You know, there's a lot of people who want to say, oh, there's no good cops out there. But you don't know all the cops. You haven't talked to him. You don't know what they're about. You know, you might, you might be speeding, and he pulls you over, and he gives you a ticket, and you think he's being an asshole, but really he's doing his job, and yeah. he's he's just trying to keep people safe on the road. And then there's other incidences where they're a little over aggressive. You know, he talks down, cops will talk down to you all the time, like you're, you're just nothing, and you need to do exactly what they tell you. But right, it it all it all depends. So cool. Well, Travis, I know you got to get going. Yes, sir. And thank you so much thank for coming you very on. Much. Yeah. It was nice meeting you, it Travis. It was awesome. Awesome to meet you guys. Yeah. Good time. And if anybody has any questions, please call us at 360 693 7544. And you can also visit us at our website, fvtv11.org. And you can watch all of our past uh, videos and new releases. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we wanted to mention that a member of our audience, it's her birthday today. That would be Dixie. Yes. So I wanted to extend a happy birthday to her. Dixie. There we go. <laughs> Should we sing happy birthday? Uh, All right, guys. You lead. I'll let Michael lead since he can play the guitar. Matter of fact, why don't you guys come up here? Come yeah, up. Bobby, you're yeah, a singer. We're you feel have, comfortable uh, singing? All yep. Right. Michael and Bob, come on up. Bobby Lee experience. Bobby Lee and Mr. G. Yep. I love the way that flows. Yeah, that works out pretty good. Now, everybody knows Michael's been up here before uh, with us on FETV. Michael. Yeah, always good to see you, Mr. Man. G, good to see you, sir. <laughs> yeah, always good to see you, Bob, buddy. Bob, nice to meet you. Now, Michael's been on here before with us and uh, taught Adrian how to play. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm an expert now. Did you practice? Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll uh, have this phone in every case. All right. Yeah. Right now? Uh, yeah, right now. Right on. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got Elvis. What do you remember? Elvis is in the house. Okay. Um, I remember I strummed four times, and you told me where to hold. I think it was like right above the fret. It was probably right there. I remember these are called frets. I think. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Or am I making you fret? I tried. This is string one. This is string four. Try four, three, two, one. Okay, where do you want me to hold, or don't hold? Actually, put your pinky right there. Okay. That's a G. What up, G? <laughs> and then put this finger right there uh, and take that one off and strum it again. Yeah. Not bad, so you have a guitar player in you, I can tell. <laughs> well, I'm playing. Yeah. yeah. You said there's one hanging on your wall? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it's my girlfriend's. Oh. So I can pretend <laughs> that that's why I don't practice this because she gets mad if I touch it. Yeah, well, after seven years, there's a. 
uh, I don't know. I, I think we are a common law state, but uh, you have to live together continuously for seven years. Oh, so every crazy. six and a half, I kick her out. <laughs> she, has to go stay, she has to go stay with her parents for a month, and then I invite her back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no He's working the system. <laughs> Yeah, so how long have you played the guitar? Uh, I, what time is it? <laughs> I don't know. What are I you guess doing? three minutes. Um, if I'm playing guitar, I won't be able to hold this though, right? Yeah, how about we do this? Well, can't do that. I was going to move that over there. You might have to use your apple juice. No, that's fine. <laughs> we need duct tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so definitely, so I'm not a performing artist as uh, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, a guitar teacher. So, um, any any questions about uh, um, lessons? Uh, uh, playing guitar? Oh, she's oh, saying uh, okay. she's having while, trouble hearing you. While you're talking, okay. you hold the mic so we can at least hear you. And then when you go to play, we'll hold the mic for you. That's why you sing. Excellent. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy yeah, birthday. we need to sing our happy birthday. Oh, yeah, that's what we're here for. The, get to that point oh okay yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah you're gonna be singing that right <laughs> i'm kidding she, the, I'm kidding. the <laughs> birthday girl starts it <laughs> oh is that how it works who's the, who's the better singer bobby um he's the singer i don't i, don't I am a singer you do tonight but yeah he's an amazing singer songwriter this this guy here has um a studio he uh writes Incredible words, too. Very moving. Um, plays great, uh, sings great, and um, has a band. The Bobby Lee Experience. Bobby Lee's one word, by the way. And just so you know how magnificent a teacher Mr. G is. Oh, here it goes. He gave me the lesson, the guitar lesson of my life five huh. and a half years ago and changed my life. Right on, brother. And, um, man, listen to every word he says. You'll be playing uh, with us next time. <laughs> He's playing with us now. Yeah, Michael's changed He's a changed. lot of people's lives he by really uh, teaching I, them how to play. And, you know, even if you are a professional and you just need little, little touch-ups or fix things, Michael's the guy to go to. I mean, he I've heard some stories guy. that he just... <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Just little, little tweaks, man, he can totally change the way you play. I appreciate that. Well, Thanks. Absolutely. I, I wanted to... I wanted to say, you know, I, I get I get a good feeling from you, you know, uh, you know, having you as a teacher, having only been the second time I met you, you have a very easygoing demeanor about you, and I appreciate that. I, it's like I feel like I can screw up around you and not be mad. Really? Not be mad at you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Mrs. G trained me. That's how. <laughs> yeah. Good job. That's how I got. And there. his bill's coming next week. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of Michaels in this room that yeah. I've that I've learned from too. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. The other so, Michael, so there. So now, how long have you guys been playing together? Well, yeah, we met five and a half years ago out in front of uh, Briz Loan and Guitar, right next to where oh, Mr. G's yeah. School of Guitar is. And um, we both have many instruments that have come from there. Oh. Many. It's the greatest guitar, yeah. it's the greatest guitar show or store known to mankind. <laughs> Without a doubt. It's, um, it's great. You meet a lot of great people there. I met yeah. you first there yep. and didn't even realize it this yeah. afternoon. Oh, that's right. And um, Yeah, we were hanging out there. <laughs> yep. Waiting for Mr. G. Yeah. And so about five and a half years ago, something like that. Yeah. Um, come around the corner and he's standing outside of his uh, his uh, studio. His studio. Studio. And he just introduced us. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm going, well, I'm Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've been together ever since. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, chosen brothers, no absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, he was wearing a denim jacket, and just the way he looked, I thought this guy is probably a British rocker. And <laughs> I expected you to have an accent, actually. Well, I didn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we can probably play something. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. No, what song is this? Is this something that you wrote or Bobby wrote? Bobby. This, this is a song that that uh, I wrote, and. Uh, uh, well, you know, I've written a lot of songs, and um, but when when uh, I wrote this song, uh, 
there was just something about it that I said, you know what, Mr. G needs to play with me on this song. And so primarily, um, he has played with me on this song since, since I really formulated it. And uh, it's growing, uh, it's grown into what you're about yeah. to hear. The, the river? Um, no, let's go ahead and do... Uh, um, oh, the other one. Love's been on my mind. Yeah. These are awesome. fun. Yeah, awesome. we haven't... So love's been while. on my mind. Love's been on my mind. And let's see if, if uh, shall I hold the mic up? Yeah, good. let's do that so let's we can see if I hear his music. I'm gonna so need a cue. This, this is called tuning. The ancient art. I apologize, Bobby, but it changed. Uh, of course it did. Thank you. Travis was amazing, by the way. 22. Absolutely. He's 22? Is that what you said? Oh. Yeah, when you talk, you need to have the mic. I said, I think oh, Travis was... Sorry, it's off. Uh, okay. I said, I think Travis was amazing. And I was asking, yes, is he 22? He is that... Yeah, 22. Wow. <clears throat> so much clarity. Yeah, he's really Gives amazing. me hope for the future, guys. It does. I'm telling it does. You. He was I've... very eloquent. Yeah. You know, that's what I like to see. Yeah. I got it. All right. Love's been on my mind. Like it did the first time It's a love that never ends I've looked all my days For love to find me For a love to keep me warm Always on my mind Always loves me right Loves being on my mind A better loving I'll never find Loves being on my mind A better loving I'll never this time love will last in the stars it's written it's a love that shares no past your heart next to mine gives love to meaning it'll stand the test of time always on my mind always loves me right loves being on my mind a better loving Never find love's been on my mind. A better loving I'll never find. My mind always loves me right. 
love has been on my mind A better loving I'll never find Love has been on my mind A better loving Thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Man, that is awesome. Oh, thank awesome. you. Yeah, that, that was, was fun. It was just okay. That was fun. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, that's my bedtime, man. Yes, it's, it's, it kind of <laughs> is. Hey, we're just getting it? started here. It's awesome. <laughs> So uh, now you said you had a CD coming out, or is there? Yeah, we we've uh, actually we've got our second CD. It should be out in uh, March. Um, it'll be uh, titled uh, Bobby Lee, um, No Hate, Do Love, and uh, um, our first album uh, was released earlier this year. Um, it's uh, Bobby Lee Beyond My Eyes. Um, we've got that listed on uh, online and uh, on iTunes and many of the other stores. And uh, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Nice, that's what's happening. Right on. Now, are you playing at any venues where people um, can call you? Well, we, what we do is um, I have a uh, recording studio and um, not only do we record all our music um, and we do that every day and um, but we also record some of the local artists, um, particularly the young artists that are coming up that you know don't have the funds or resources, and right. so you know we make that available to them you know whenever possible. And so how do how does a young entertainer get involved with this? Like for you to help them out with recording and stuff. Well, the best way to do it is to give us a call. Um, um, we have a uh, website and. Uh, you can send me an email on there, and uh, we will get back to every single person, and we do, uh, to every person that comes to us. And uh, uh, that website is uh, www.iambobbylee.com. Um, uh, that's all lowercase, right? Yeah, it's all lowercase. Okay. And uh, yeah, and uh, get a hold of us, and we'll go from there. Cool. So now is Michael on this CD also? No. No, no. Uh, this song that we just played for you, um, Mike and I have been working on it um, better part of a year. Okay. And um, we're coming down to the place where we're going to formally record it. And, oh, yeah. Um, Sven, by the way, I talked to him. He wants to talk to us this weekend. Oh, his, terrific. But terrific. Um, this weekend's book, so maybe next week. That's at Sven Studios, right? Sven Say and Sven Gali, Sven yes, Labs. Yes, it is. Sven yes, Cooper. It is. Right on. <laughs> and uh, so we'll, you know, sometime, sometime here in the uh, beginning of 2015, um, Mike and I will be getting together to formally record this. And uh, Yeah. Um, a couple other tunes that we've been working on and uh, Work in progress uh, it comes out. right on all right brother you want to play again or do you want to yeah you know what can we do something real quick let's do yeah. it. you guys pl uh play happy birthday let's do it i think happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dixie. You made another one. Right yeah, on. Yeah. Right so. on. Is today the fifth? Yes. For the rest of the day. My father's birthday is today uh, as well. Happy birthday, Pops. Um, he's 83. And 
The I asked him what he Mr. wanted. G. I asked, yeah, Mr. G, what he wanted for his birthday, and he laughed, and he said, another one. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> yes, amen. Awesome. That's, that's, that's awesome. what he that's said. Good. So, what is the song you have for us? Uh, we have a song that uh, I wrote many years ago. It's called "The River," and uh, basically, it's a song about paying attention to um, this beautiful gift we've all been given called life and youth. Don't waste any of it, pay attention. Like that young man told us to here a while back. Yep. And uh, uh, it's a great song, We gives you a good feeling. Right. So we're gonna run this one by you and see what you think. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready, my brother? We'll find out. <laughs> okay. The River.
So things are uh, things are swell. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I see that you brought your lovely wives. Yes, of course. We did. Yes. yes we did. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we Apparently get them on camera? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because last time. We, I said apparently it pays great dividends to learn to play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, we are blessed we, men. There we is are, no doubt about that. Totally. We found women that tolerate us. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, last time when you were on, Michael, you, you said, yeah, this is the song that ser I serenaded my wife with, and where is she? Oh, that's <laughs> right. She left, left the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so, no. Yeah, it was funny. I forgot about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so what's what's in the future for you guys what's what are you guys thinking where are you going to go just try to get the cd out or um my my whole focus is to teach to you know just book students and uh you know in a dream world be able to do lessons in different countries on you know weekends you know um and work on our um acoustic stuff at spinland yes <laughs> Good friend of ours who has a uh, oh, he's amazing, beautiful amazing home studio and uh, so incredible acoustics. So. so that's that's mine. And then the Bobby Lee Experience has um, their own business, their own uh, goals. Yes, we do. We're uh, um, we're always we're pursuing um, um, our national venue, which hopefully this year um, will, as it has in the past, continue to grow and. Um, uh, we're continue to re make albums, record music, and uh, sing about love. You know, uh, that's really what we're about. Now, when you say the Bobby Lee Experience, do you have a band behind yes, you? Yes, we do. Um, we have a. Uh, I have sensational players. Um, Kevin Detweller is my drummer. Um, Ron Hill is uh, kind of our uh, our guru. He plays bass. He sings background vocals, he plays keyboards, he plays lead guitar, and it's like it's quite, it's quite an eye-opening experience just to sit there and watch him do what he does. Sometimes uh, we, the other players, just kind of go, wow, did you, did you see that? You know, and he's just amazing. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we, put on a, we, we put on a real good show, and uh, um, we're always looking forward to doing it. So um, we keep recording albums and moving toward the future, as long as that future allows us to move forward. Right. And uh, um, like this beautiful lady who had her birthday today, to have one more is always a great adventure. Yes, it is. <laughs> so that, that's kind of what we're doing. Oh, cool. Yep. And so if they, people want to learn how to play the guitar, they need to get a hold of you right. downtown? Yeah, Mr. G's School of Guitar is 508 Washington Street. I'm right downtown on Washington, right across from Smith Tower. And the phone number? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. 360-852-0562. Right. That's it. And uh, um, like I said, I own a recording studio. It's Studio One Recordings. Um, we're here in Vancouver, and uh, uh, call for an appointment. Um, call just to say hi, like I said. Leave me an email. I will get back to you. And um, uh, our phone number is 360-980-9674, Monday through Friday, anytime. Uh, we'll get a hold of you, and uh, can't wait to hear from you. And there, you guys are helping people that are really struggling, you know, basically financially. That are trying to get their music out and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it's it's more about it's more about getting your idea out and expressing yourself and having someone um, there to help you express that. And that's really more important than than the money. Right. You know, uh, you know, nothing's free, but but um, it's not about the money. Yeah. You know, and. Um, Give us a call. You know, we'll work something out. We've we've never turned anybody down. Yeah, yet. that's what we kind of do here is uh, with the station. You know, we're a free speech station and we're public access, and that's what we're doing here is trying to allow people to have an avenue to kind of be exposed and you know where 
they wouldn't have this platform anywhere else. It, right. It, you right. know. And it's it's a great platform you guys have have put together here. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. It really is. Yeah, it's very comfortable. We Good try vibe. To comfortable. Yeah, it's it's homey. It's yeah. homey. I like it. <laughs> so if anybody wants to call in and ask Michael or Bob any uh, questions, please call us at three six zero six nine three. 7544 and uh, we'll be here for a little bit longer so anybody can call in and ask questions. You ready for your lesson? Ready for your lesson? lesson? You know what? Every yeah. time I get with Michael, talk about making people look good. Man, I get there, I start playing, and I'm also Michael start playing along with me, and I'm like, yeah, I sound really good. <laughs> you did sound good. <laughs> but the whole time he's just making me look really good. Solid rhythm. <laughs> sound good. God no, bless him. Well, he's, Michael's got solid rhythm. Is he going to get? So is he going to get a lesson too? No, I already had one today. He did oh, have did one you? today. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that means Sue, you're all come all on more. back. Hey, everybody else has had their second lesson. Come on, Sue. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this next song you guys gonna play? Can we play another? Is yeah, that, let's play another cool? one. Oh, right. It's got this room's fun to play in. You all don't mind? Right. Yes, it's got a great tone in it. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's do um, the. Uh, the time to love Maybe we'll find love gonna last forever Take the time to dream Maybe we'll find love right there together Take the time to love Take the time to dream Take the time to hold one another and love Gonna find its own way Take the time to dream, take the time to love Take the time to hug one another and love Gonna find its way Time to dream, take the time to hold one another and love. Gonna find its own way. Take the time to dream, take the time to love. Take the time to hug one another and love. Gonna find its own way. That's thanks amazing. So much. Oh, thanks a lot, Mike. That means a lot. Appreciate it's, you having us. Oh, yeah. That was you know, awesome. How long did it take for you to kind of get your fingers to do what you wanted to do? You mean the second time? The second time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> thanks, Michael. Um, <laughs> it's taken me two years just to get the, this pinky to work. You know, I don't, I really don't know how much time um, it takes on a calendar, but it's, a, it's about um, sitting down with it for a certain period of time while you're relaxed, while you're comfortable, and hearing in your head. 
uh, one of my guitar teachers would, uh, would ask me what I did, and I said, well, I came up with this lick, and I'd start to play it, and he'd go, sing it. And I'd say, no, I can play it. And he goes, yeah, sure, sing it. <laughs> and I'd be like, I don't sing. And he goes, well, if you can sing it, then you can learn how to control the instrument and play it. But it, you have to be clear on what it is in your head, so sing it. And so when you let yourself get comfortable, most of my students, in fact, I think really everybody, uh, at least I fundamentally hold that everybody does. It was for me. As soon as I was relaxed, it's like I was able to um, get the neural pathway connection to my finger so it became natural. So it really wasn't a matter of time or just rote practice. Having said that, there's no substitute for, you know, repetition on, on many things. But just to get comfortable with your hands, and then you're no longer wrestling with the instrument, but you're, you know, dancing with the instrument, then it, things come fast. Then it's like looking at a piece of music or a songbook that has just chords in it and being able to learn a song just as you go through it in five or ten minutes and pretty soon you know a songbook is like a new toy right. you just got a bunch of songs you start thinking of songs maybe that for me I started thinking of songs that I've grown up with that I never considered playing and then I listen to them and I can hear the structure of them now so you know I don't know some people do it really quick some people it takes time but I think it has to do with their level of comfort while they're holding the instrument you know there seems to be this, I don't know why, but it's this uh, implied agreement that musicians starting out can't play in front of somebody or with someone until they, you know, sound exactly like the record, who, I mean the recording, or, um, or they feel like they play it well. When it's a language, you know, we could be speaking it immediate, right. just like we do when we're children. So, um, why, are you comfortable? Because you sound comfortable when you're playing, you sound really comfortable. You're really solid. Well, oh. your atmosphere makes it comfortable, too. Well, how long did it take you? Oh, it's taken a while. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know. And you worked with your hands a lot, right? And so, right. yeah. You know, like I used to do a lot of yard work and drywall, and my hands would be kind of stiff. It would take a while to kind of break them up. But right. this became a physical therapy. So I think the second time I was able to do it quicker. The first time I did bar chords wrong, and it took me like two years to do my first bar chord, and I just did them completely wrong. Uh, and uh, the second time, I learned them pretty quick. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yes, I'm, just rambling. I'm just rambling. Oh, no, point, there's but. no ramble in it. Um, that's absolutely profound. I mean, um, uh, <laughs> most people, most people, and we run into them a lot, they say, well, you know, come on up and play. And I say, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not done learning. And it's like, but that's the lesson. Right, right. Okay. It's just speak the language. It's playing with each other and learning how to communicate with each other with an instrument and your voice, you know, or whatever it is that you play, you know. And uh, coming together, there's a unity that happens between us, um, musicians, and uh, uh, um, yeah. It comes like out in our music. Having a musical conversation. It is. Well, it's one, amazing. One thing you said that really, you know, hit, pardon the pun, but struck a chord. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, is uh, how you said it. It has to feel comfortable in your hands, and that's exactly true. Like, And I don't know if it's just because it's someone else's property, but when you hand me the guitar, it feels like someone hand me their baby. Like, oh, God, what if I drop it? What if I <laughs> break a string? You know, it, it just feels what? really awkward. Well, uh, in a sense, I am, but in this sense, um, this is kind of a workhorse guitar. I don't think much would happen to it. It's got dents and chips, and it, <laughs> it even has it. it has that little sticker there. Even yeah, its scars prove it's worth in battle. Yeah, and this came from Briz, low oh, guitar. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, uh, I while you guys were playing, I actually wrote Mike this note. It just says, "I like watching Mr. G's fingers at work." You know. Uh, this oh really? It, it, yeah. Oh yeah. It's just it's insane the dexterity you know that you have watching, and it it made me think. You know that that song, uh, you know, "Devil Went Down to Georgia." Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. The, yeah, with the fiddle. Yeah, Charlie. If, if the devil made you that bet with a solid gold guitar, would you take the bet? That's a heavy guitar. Solid gold. <laughs> way sure too. I sold my old Les Paul that I love, so no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I, um, I hear you. No, I got the guitars that I, I'm, I'm happy with. But, <laughs> but thanks. Well, you got a gold year. guitar for sale? <laughs> no. 
you're you're never done you're never done finding the next happiness guitar well I there's noticed. there's as long as there's room on my wall to hang one i i i, I um have a sense of obligation to find a home for those lost guitars <laughs> me too brother so do you guys sense that like when, right when you come together with somebody that you're easily able to play in harmony with each other or do you, with see, us it do you was. see that there, well, maybe there might be some struggles you know, right at first that's yeah. a great question Mike. it is you know what what when i play with mr g no matter whether we're playing together or whether we come to a group um, of other musicians um, Mike and I have such a smooth ride when we play that other musicians can just fall right into it and feel like they are home, okay? And um, we, we, have a, we have a good vibe. Yeah, and historically, I mean like forever, I've been kind of difficult to play with. I just sit by myself, I've never really considered myself the a performer, um, but a teacher, right? So. I like to jam and I like to work on things and so I consequently add all these parts that are just little glimpses of the symphony that seems to always be going uh, on in, in my head and so I didn't really know what parts to play when I would play with other musicians and I, and I have a tendency to rush the beat so um, historically I've been really you know not that easy to, to play with or jam with but with Bobby it was just instant. I yeah, attributed that, I attributed that to you, actually. We, we, uh, well, um, people ask me, you know, what, what, you know what, what are your influences? And, and uh, you know, they say, who, who, you know, whose music can you play? And I'm going, well, I can't. Uh, I never learned how to play other people's songs. I just love music. I have since I was a little kid. And uh, it just seemed to make sense to me instead of trying to spend all that time and energy learning someone else's song to put that time and energy into creating a song yeah. and over the course of you know 40 years um you know i've gotten pretty good at it and uh, then mr g came along and those little parts and those little insignificant little things that seem seem just teeny parts of something bigger um he's uh He's found a home for some of those with the way that I play and what I play. And uh, uh, he's one of my favorite people on the earth to play with. That's a big ditto, brother. So do you think that's what makes you unique as a player or as a musician? I do, I do. I think that, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, we run into all kinds. We actually uh, have friends that um, think that uh, the original music is... Um, not as important as learning to, perf the, to perfect someone else's performance. And, uh, you know, it's like, who am I to say? You know, it's like, that's what, that's what their, their goal is in playing music. My goal is to uh, find those places in my heart and expose them with a guitar and, and uh, song. And uh, uh, this yeah, man here puts the finishing finish. pieces on it like... Um, they're in my head, like he's literally looking inside of me and pulling them out and um, applying them to this little song, this little piece of guitar work that I've done, and right. makes them magnificent. And, it goes uh, both ways, yeah, totally. If you play, uh, a lot of times you play exactly what I'm hearing in my head too, supposed to be there. Well, we're, our, uh, we're our friend, definitely muses. Our, our friend Sue <laughs> that uh, plays is an amazing musician. Oh, she, she calls is. it sprinkling fairy dust. She does that really well. She's great at it, but that's what it occurs like. Like, he's just doing all the work, and I just get to actually sprinkle <laughs> this little fairy dust. <laughs> so would you guys say that uh, is it more important that a person finds their own niche or to play other people's music? What, what's the best way for someone to kind of express themselves and maybe become an artist? I... I have a, I always have an answer. I have an answer to you. <laughs> go first, my brother. Are you sure? Yes, uh, absolutely. I think if someone's starting an instrument or they're just getting into music, whatever inspires them is what they, what, what they, what they, what I support them in, right? Whatever inspires them. Having said that, my interest is when I uh, hear like one of my students, I want to be able to catch their musical voice, their signature, you know, their their musical interpretation or arrangement of someone else's or their original like I would hear and say oh wow that's Mike and then 
I would go, oh, wow, that's Hotel California. So I'd recognize your style first. It's like I can hear stuff on the radio right. I've never heard before, and I could say, I know that's Eric Clapper, and that's Carlos Santana. There's no doubt that's Jimi Hendrix. It's because at that window of time when they were recorded, they had such a strong musical voice that they got a musical signature, and you can just hear it. And on the guitar, it's mostly this hand over here, not so much this. You know, at some point, everyone on the planet kind of has to do the best placement and pressure that they can here and transition and timings from here. This hand has five jobs, so if you start watching a lot of the great players um, that have played a lot, they're minimal movement, really minimal movement over here. This hand over here is kind of, um, you know, Shrugger behind the curtain. It's, it's, it's behind the curtain that exposes the secret wow. of Oz, you know, it's, it's that hand. So. Yeah, I, to answer your question, whatever inspires somebody to get started, and then I'm interested really in their interpretation, their voice, you know, what's inside them. If it's someone else's material, what can they do with it? And, you know, the more we analyze a song, the more we get comfortable with the structure, the more we hear all the parts. Once we hear all the parts, there's another part we hear that's in our head. That's when we have our arrangement of it. So that's what's interesting to me. I don't know if that's a lot of words to answer that. No, no, it was, that was great. Very good. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of along the same line, only with me, it's, um, look, whoever's out there, pick the guitar up, or like you said, any instrument that you want, and then at your first opportunity, which I guarantee you will happen before your, your um, confidence in yourself happens, but that opportunity to play with other people, take that time, play with other people, the more exposure you have to other musicians and other situations musically, the faster you're going to learn, the more you're going to learn, and the more fun you're going to have. And if you're not having fun doing this, then you're doing it the wrong way. Yeah. So it's, it's about fun. fun well, it's got to you know? be, be fun, man. There it is. We have fun. We do. Yeah. I, I had a question for you. Yes. Um, you, you've mentioned a, a few times that you're not a performance artist, you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you consider this <clears throat> performing? This is a stretch for me. Okay. This is a, this is a this is a you know a really comfortable venue, and I somehow when Mike invited me the first time missed that it was live on air. I didn't catch that until Mrs. G pointed it out as we were here. But um, I think that's why I kept stopping and having conversations in the middle because I, I've done the uh, band performance and I've done uh, theater and stage play stuff, and I have a really clear distinction on what performance is and what entertainment is, and I get really inspired by teaching. I have a lot of fun. I, you know, if I'm performing, there's always the anxieties that come with having to play and generate when I might not feel like playing that that way, but as a perform, performance, I mean, that's, that's the gig. That's, you know, being professional enough and tight enough to do it in spite of, you know, whether you feel like it or not at this time, at this location, with this equipment. But the other thing is, I kind of like to go to bed early, and a lot of gigs are at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the first response especially made a lot of sense as to why, you know, like just not having to do something you don't, you don't feel. You can like. relate to that then. Yeah, yeah totally. I, well, it, it just, it just uh, kind of shocks me and saddens me because you're very good and entertaining to watch. So. Oh, thank you. Yes. But man, I got some students that just blow me away. They, I love, um, I have this one student that, um, jokingly, he, he's, he just, he's so comfortable seeking gigs and just taking them. Um, Thurston, I just love that guy. And, and jokingly, oh, I just say, you got more gigs than an apple. That was a uh, technology joke. Okay. Or, oh, okay, or, yeah, yeah, gigs. <laughs> I got um, but, but I just, um, I have students who just love to gig, and I have other students who just don't. So I don't do recitals, but I really encourage my students to get together, to at least jam. And if they're in a band, to just set a gig. I mean, nothing gets you ready like a gig, you know? Nothing does. When you have uh, an objective to learn a song or learn guitar, it's just there. But when you've set a specific measurable date and time, like I'm going to be, you know, at uh, 10th and Broadway at 8.30 p.m. on Monday the 26th or whatever, you have a completely different relationship to your objective. It becomes really specific and measurable results that, you know, you're either there or you're not. So nothing gets you ready like a gig. So I encourage my students to go do the work while I just sit back and jam with them. 
<laughs> in my little cubby hole and let them go. But no, Bobby's absolutely right. Nothing will get you ready <clears throat> to just accept music um, than being just in a place to share music, even if it's the first time, you know. It, it occurs just as an insight and a revelation at the same time because you're putting some kind of action with this. It's just an epiphanic moment for people who hear music while they're playing it with other people for the first time. It's really magical. I love it. I totally oh, love it. It is. It's great to watch. Yeah, I mean, people it's get hooked. Great you know, to watch. It's just great to like, be a part uh, of. Yeah, and it's just. It is. It see, is. you got hooked. Oh, right? Yeah. All it takes is one nice chord with someone else doing it. You know, and you're going, whoa. Jamming occurred. That was music, it felt like. Like you said, I sound great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, do you guys have another song? We could come up with something. Oh, I don't know what. You want to do uh, Art of Snow? Oh, you want to go there? I don't know. We could do Hearts of Stone. And if anybody wants song. to call in, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, if anybody wants to call in, 360 693 7544. It's A minor F, C, G. Yeah. Yeah, Hearts of Stone. Into the darkest room where we can hardly see. Into the light we come, into the air we breathe. We're gathered everywhere and thought to think alone. Creating minds that fear, creating hearts of stone. So here I am. I'm a strong man, but I'm a wanderer, a lost control. There we are, lost in the same place. It's right and what is wrong. Parents who we are, heaven help this place and melt these hearts of stone. We're off into the sky before we learn to fly. Forever reaching out and never asking why. For never turning back for who we left alone. Creates an atmosphere, creates a heart of stone. So here I am. I'm a strong man, but I'm a wanderer, lost control. Here we are, lost in the same place. Between what is right and what is wrong. Hell, it's who we are. So heaven help this place and break these hearts of song. It said there is a place. We can all agree It said there is a land where We are truly free I'd like to ride that wave And watch as kingdom come the 
the velvet sky and through the setting sun. So here I am, I'm a strong man, but I'm a wanderer, thoughts come true. Here we are, lost in the same place, caught between what is right and what is wrong. Hell, it's who we are, so heaven help this Heaven help this place and melt these hearts of stone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, felt good. Felt good. Bobby Lee original. Heart of Stone. Good. Yeah. The words are great, man. Oh, you write great good. words. Great parts. Great man. words. Great parts. Great <laughs> how, how, uh, how long do you suppose it, or how long did it take you guys till your fingers quit hurting? That's one thing I know. Even just holding it and pushing on that string, man, it's like, yeah. It's easy. 30 days. 30 days. Half hour a day for 30 days, and it'll huh. go away. Yeah. And, as, and then that's the trap, because then you have to play every day. Because you can go two or three days, but if you go four days, you go, oh, man, that hurts. <laughs> so just... And if you don't use a pick, it's both hands, because then you're going, there every once is. in a while, I'll have a student that, um, like a young student especially, I'll challenge to go through a chord book, and I'll play everything <laughs> left-handed while they're playing everything right-handed. And both my fingers hurt, because I'm not used to using the right, the same parts. Mm. It's really, uh, it reminds me of how challenging yeah, we, it was we in we the need beginning. To actually, yeah. we, need, we need to actually make a video of that, because it's quite amazing to watch. Yeah, no, no. I'm waiting for you to use your feet and your legs to play with next. I mean, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, <laughs> I admire drummers. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I'm that. telling you. <laughs> so, uh, do your wives play any instruments? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. You know, we've been talking about Mr. G as a teacher. He took um, my wife two years ago and uh, um, taught her how to play guitar. And uh, her goal, great thing um, she told me recently, she says the only reason she ever wanted to learn guitar was so she could play my songs, so we could sit down and play together. Oh, wow. And um, oh, nice. she is really learning a lot. And, uh, She's amazing. She's a great and, finger um, picker, too. She, she is. We're just working on volume. Yes, we are. And, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, Val. Very, very soon she'll be up in the forefront with us, and uh, we're looking forward to it. She's done some recording, yeah? Yes, she has. She yeah. started that process. And Mrs. G has lots of talents. Um, she just kind of expressed an interest a little bit in a Native American flute. So we got one, and uh, we have to take her to the woods so she can learn to play it. <laughs> she is a gardener, and she is incredible uh, as a source of information for nutrition and health. Yeah, we want to bring her on oh, someday. Oh, she is. She yeah, is. Uh, it's an interest that a lot of people around here have is about the GMOs and what they're doing to people's bodies. And, and we know through you she, that Mrs. G knows quite she, a bit. She does. She does. So uh, we'll, we'll have to bring her that. Yep, she, uh, we'll she have to bring her on one of these shows amazing. maybe next Friday. You have to talk, <laughs> so, to talk to her about that. I have to talk to the boss. Yeah. <laughs> so, but... Yeah, so we're getting close to wrapping this up. But Thank we you really so much for you guys. Having us, Thanks man. for having us, man. This yeah. was a blast. Yeah. This was man. awesome. It's awesome to see people just in a relaxed situation and just playing so beautifully together. Well, it's, it's just awesome. awesome. Just so you know, it's amazing walking into a comfortable situation that makes me feel very easy and, and uh, ready to play and ready to just, I, I mean, I just, 
kind of feel like yeah. we sit here and had a gig with each other tonight, you know? Yeah, Great. yeah, exactly. Did, for, I guess. Well, yeah, we did. This, for a guy who doesn't uh, like gigging or performing at all, I have a great time here. So. Oh, me too. It's a great time having Thanks. you. Thanks, Adrian. Appreciate well, thank it, Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks a lot, man. You did thank good you on your second me. lesson. Oh, yeah. I, I really blew it away. We just need to get <laughs> Sue up here to do our second <laughs> lesson on what we're closing out here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> your second lesson. <laughs> oh, come on. See, everybody else wants to buy a guitar to get that lesson. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it's it's fun to try, but yeah, I, I guess we're at about that point. Yeah. So I guess if you guys want to just play until we're off or yeah. something, just well, jam. And and let's just say something to the viewers. You know, you're more than welcome to come down here. We had a uh, caller last week, Mitch, that called in, and he came down and spent half the you know time with us here. Yeah, I and didn't notice he had to leave. You don't have to stay the whole two hours here with us. You can come down and just visit for a little bit, and then leave when you have to. But come down and join us and. Everybody's it's like a party down here. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Till next Friday, guys. Yep, next Friday. Thanks for Take that. us out, guys.